In this video, I'm gonna show you how to run Android on your computer. So let's take a look. To begin, we're gonna to wanna to download the Android image file, and we're gonna be doing that at android-x86.org. So once you get over here onto the home page, you're gonna click on the download link, and there's three sources that you can get to download your ISO image file. You can pick any, I'm just gonna be using the first one. And then over here at the page, what you wanna do is find the Android version that you wanna run. So I'm gonna be using the latest one that's here, which is Android version nine. And you just have to click on the first link over here, which is the ISO image file, and it'll download it. So it's just under a gig. What I'll do is I'll just jump over to the next step. And we're at rufus.ie, and that is the official URL to download the Rufus bootable USB creation tool. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be downloading this and I'm gonna install it on my computer. Version 3.19 is the latest version that's out. We'll go ahead and click on that right now, and we're gonna let it download, and here it is. So double open that up, say yes to the prompt. And the first question is, do you want to allow Rufus to check for application updates online? And I'm okay with that, so I'll just select yes. Okay, so we have it installed. Here is the main screen for Rufus device. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna be plugging in a USB uh, flash drive. For this video, I'm gonna be using the Data Traveler G4 16 gig USB flash drive. Now this is a reliable uh, flash drive and I've used these over and over again with no issues. So I definitely recommend them. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be installing and I'm just gonna plug it in right now. So I have my USB drive now in there. It's already labeled Android 9. You can label that whenever you'd like to. Uh, and then we want to do the boot selection. The boot selection we have is going to be the ISO image. And when we check on the select option, we get the Explorer that opens up and I have my ISO image file already downloaded into this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and then click on open. Then under partition scheme, we're going to be leaving that as default. Target system is going to be default. And this is where you can label the drive. You can call it whatever you want. I just can call mine Android 9. And we're going to be leaving the file system as FAT32 and the cluster size as default as well. When you have all these options selected, you can go ahead and click on start. And we get the prompt over here, right in ISO image mode, which is recommended. And we'll be leaving it the way it is and then click on okay. And then we get a warning about all the data that's going to be removed on the drive. So we click on okay. Your flash drive will be completely erased and it's going to copy and add all the files onto it. This process takes about a minute or so. I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, it's ready. Everything has been copied over onto the USB drive. We're ready to go. We can go ahead and click on close. And now what you want to do is insert this into the computer that you want to install the Android operating system. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've just booted up our PC. I'm going to be hitting the F7 key on my keyboard so I can get the boot menu. And here it is. On my computer, it's going to be F7. On your computer, it really depends on the BIOS. It could be F7, F10, F2. So you're going to want to Google how to get to your boot manager. I have my Kingston USB drive here selected. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you have the option to run it live. And that's really good if you're going to be testing it out and making sure it's running properly. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the installation option. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. So basically what we want to do is you want to modify a partition. And I'm going to be using the largest one that I have here. And then I'll hit C to create or modify. And then I'll just hit enter. And I want to make sure that I'm selecting my hard drive, not my USB drive. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now it's going to be asking to format the partition. So I'm recommending just using the ext4. You can also use NTFS or FAT32, but we'll be using the first option here for this installation. So go ahead and hit enter. Just a little bit of a warning here that it's going to be formatting the drive. We're going to say yes to that. We'll jump over to the next step once the formatting has been completed. Okay, format's now complete. And now we're ready to install the operating system. So we'll select yes to the first option here and we'll select yes. And do you want to make this uh, boot directory read write? So we're going to select yes. So now it's going to go ahead and install the operating system. Uh, this might take a couple of minutes. I'll jump again to the next step. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and select the first option here and just start running Android. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Okay. And now it's loading up Android. Okay. So we're booted up here and we're at the configuration wizard. It's asking to select the location that you're in. I'm going to be leaving it as English and go ahead and click on start. And now it wants to connect to a Wi-Fi network. I'm going to go ahead and select a local network here for me. When you're using Android, you definitely want to be connected to the internet because there's a lot of there's a lot of updates that it's going to try to do, as well as connecting to the Play Store and making it very useful. You want to be online for that. You can do it without internet connectivity, but you have very basic functionality. Okay, so we have the option to copy data or not copy data. I'm just not going to copy data. I'm doing a fresh install here. And now you're going to be signing in with your Gmail. I'm going to just quickly do that. And next is going to be the terms and conditions. You can just select, I agree. And if you want to have your backup services enabled, you can select it here. I'm just going to turn that off. 
And uh, these are all location-based services. If you want to have them on, you can go ahead and turn them on and then accept. This is designed for a tablet, but you typically want to set a password for it. I'm not going to be setting up a password right now, but it's definitely a good idea to do that. Next is going to be for Google Pay. I'll be skipping this option. And if you want to add an additional account, you can do that right now. I'm just going to click on no thanks. To see the home dashboard, you can use the quick setup or the taskbar. I like using the quick setup because that's a common interface. So, so I'll just leave that as is and I'll select always. And here we are. We just installed Android 9 on a mini PC. Uh, we can use all the functionality that we want. We're connected to the internet, so you can go ahead and install apps, and that's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.